in the debit. I mean, my cards that I use most frequently. I'm Joe Grayson, for those who don't know who I am. And I have a son, Thatcher, who is nine, who has autism. Um, he also has um, epilepsy and celiac. And he, along with his autism, has sensory processing disorder. So, <laughs> I sought out to get him a service dog. And that's kind of what this presentation is about. Um, so, uh, in the future, I plan, uh, because my degree is in creative writing, I plan to write a book about our journey in getting a service dog, once Thatcher has his service dog and has had it for a little bit. Um, and that is going to be the title. <laughs> so, or at least that's what I think is going to be the title. <laughs> um, and I'm also uh, on the board for Autism Society. Um, so... The first step, getting a service dog. I became allergic to cats. <laughs> I love cats, and they're one of my favorite animals, but I am very, very allergic to cats. <laughs> you can't have a service cat, so. <laughs> That's right, you cannot have a service cat. Um, so I'm just kidding, the real first step, it, it was um, research. I started with research. Um, so first I needed to know that my son needed a service dog in the first place. Um, of course, a lot of people are a little skeptical when it comes to service dogs for autism assistance because, like my mother-in-law, who was uh, very, very skeptical at first, she said, he doesn't need a service dog. And then I had to explain why he needed a service dog. Um, I found, first I found a story much like the one here. So, we're going to go to that real quick, if we can. <laughs> so, I found some social benefits and some other benefits um, of having a service dog. And then why an autism assistance service dog? Um, the dog will be trained in three areas. Very important. It will be trained in tethering, tracking, and behavior interruption. Um, so here's a kid with his service dog. Here's the organization we chose, Four Paws for Ability. And here's a little bit about tethering. The dog will be trained to be tethered to the badger, like in this picture. Um, and that will prevent him from trying to wander away from us or bolting away because he's got sensory overload and he just wants to escape. And there's another child tethered to their service dog. Um, these two pictures came straight from the Four Paws for Ability website. Um, so, the next thing, and this was the most important aspect of this to me, tracking. Um, dogs have really good noses. We all know dogs have good noses. They have the ability to track using smell and can do so much more accurately than a GPS tracking device if they're trained to do so. Um, so that was an important factor for us. GPS tracking devices, um, they have their place but they, they're not as accurate, first. Second, you have to pay for the device and a monthly fee to keep it going. Which, of course, you know, with, an, with a service dog, you still have the monthly fee of vet care, <laughs> food, <laughs> um, you know, everything, treats, everything that goes along with the service dog. But a service dog was going to provide a lot more support for Thatcher than a GPS tracking device. Um, and this is a video of somebody tracking their service dog. And I need to I need to make sure that we've got some volume here. <laughs> okay, yeah, we've we've got volume. Now if I can get it to play. I cannot. Um, 
<laughs> unfortunately. But this, this video is a video of somebody having their autism service dog go find a child who is hiding. So that's how they train the dogs to um, track a child. They'll train by smell. And then when we go to training, we'll do a whole lot of one adult is hiding with Thatcher and the other adult is having the dog track where Thatcher is. So, and then lots of praise and treats when the dog finds Thatcher. Sometimes tracking doesn't work out just because of the dog. Um, and sometimes it's, it's the owner. Sometimes it's the handler. Um, but that's one thing that's, that is really, really important to us is to be able to have that peace of mind. So, Joe, do you mind me asking? Go ahead. Ask um, away. So, Albert, we just he just got out this past Thursday. Right. And um, how? He got out of your house. Yeah. The backyard. Oh. So, so this. Okay. So, I was gonna say how prevalent of a need. So. Thatcher's never gotten away from school or anything like that? Oh, uh, not from school, but he did get away from us okay. in the mall one time, um, and he, it was shortly after the Tavana store opened, uh -huh. and I love teeth, so we yeah. went to have some, you know, check out the tea place. Uh -huh. Thatcher decided he wanted to go in the back room. Oh, have the place. Yeah. And actually, a couple of the four paws dogs in training were there, and I was talking to some of them. Donnie wasn't paying attention. Thatcher walked off. And our hearts just dropped. We had no idea where he was because we thought he had gone out of the store. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh my God, what do we do? And we started looking for him. And then he came out of the room, and it was such a relief. <laughs> He came out of that back room, and I looked at the cash and I was like, I am so sorry. I have no idea what's so interesting to him back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you do take a second to look, like, we, I didn't understand why we were going to Best Buy all the time until I took a second to look at the rows of the electron. Like, when you take a second to look at right. it from their perspective, You got away from us in Best Buy once, and the, the Best Buy staff was wonderful. They were wonderful. Yeah. They noticed that I we were trying to... I there's a lot of kids that want to go there. <laughs> I, I guess. They're good with us, um, too. But I, I, wanted, I was trying to catch my child. It was obvious I was trying to catch my child. And there's three other people in blue shirts trying to also catch my child. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's we were, the easy part. When you are on site in a place where they escape. But many of the kids in our organization leave home. And right. nobody knows where they are, and they've right. got them now all over the city, so yeah. and a dog lot, can track them is right. a good idea. And a lot of these cases, unfortunately, they end in the child drowning because our kids are, are tracking the water. water. Yeah. You have a question? No, I have a story. The reason Certainly. One, we, this is my son's service dog. Um, he's our second. Our first one was actually trained to track, uh, but she is now retired. But I did exactly that. If we were we lived in Dayton at the time, and my parents had come to stay with my kids, so we went out to get their luggage from the car. My son and daughters were out playing in the front yard. We took five seconds to walk in the house, put the luggage down, walk back out. He was gone, and he was five years old. Could hear, could talk, could everything, but didn't acknowledged his name, didn't anything. We looked for 20 to 30 minutes all over the neighborhood, freaking out because we lived by two major roads. Mm -hmm. One was like a Harrodsburg kind of road, oh. so like a divided highway. Um, we had creek, we had a train track, the whole shebang. He happened to be in my neighbor's two doors down in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, it was a very safe place, but you know, very many bad things. That was the straw that broke the camel's back in my book. That's why I was like, I told my husband, I'm like, I don't care whether you're on board. I'm getting this dog. If I have to do it myself, I'm doing it myself. It was the best thing we ever did. Um, he got out one other time for, for my husband. He saw him walk out of the garage, and he, my husband was doing something in the garage. He looked up, wasn't there. 
He ran in, couldn't find him anywhere, grabbed the dog, put her tracking harness on her, and told her to find him. She put her nose to the ground, took him to the side of the house, then tried to pull him back, and he was like, no, I know he went around the side of the house, he had to look. And so she's sitting there going, you know, just kind of scenting, not, not tracking, and came all the way around the house, came back, hit the driveway. She put her nose to the ground and drug him into the house. My son's sitting there on, at the kitchen table eating an Oreo. <laughs> she knew where the boy was. My husband, and like she was yeah. saying, you don't, it's a lot of times it's the, the person holding the leash that yeah. is the problem, yeah. not the dog. Right. Sometimes they don't, they don't catch the scent, but most of the time it's the person guiding because they don't want to listen. And we can't smell our they children don't, unless they, they don't have a taste the in a while. <laughs> so, those are just my two little stories, though. Yeah, 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 actually, my son got got out one day. He walked right past my stepdad, an adult, walked right past him, right out the front door at my parents' house. And the issue with that is my parents live on a farm, mm. and there's a lot of room to wander out there. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. It, it's in Jeffersonville, Kentucky, not to be confused with Jeffersonville, Indiana. So it's outside of Mount Sterling, in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that was a really scary moment. He ended up being outside just playing in the yard, but we didn't know where he was, and it was scary. So, <laughs> so behavior interruption. Um, dogs can be trained to comfort the handler. By handler, I mean the child, not the, th the third party, the, the parent helping. <laughs> um, they can do that by touch, putting a paw on them, using their nose to interact, laying their head on the person, um, or le even laying on the person's legs or lower legs to provide deep pressure, which mm -hmm. is called lap. Um, that's what they call it, right? Lap? Or over? Is it over? Over? It depends yeah. on where you're sitting. Yeah. <laughs> um, either of you want to demonstrate? Any of these little things. <laughs> I don't. She doesn't know that one. But. No. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. This is how we sit for for finals week. Most yeah. of the time, my son in my place, obviously. Oh wow. Um, but he will sit there like this for hours, and it's everything that my son needs to sit and study for finals. He literally, I have pictures of him like this <laughs> studying for finals. But yeah. he's just here. Yeah. And then he can do the trust. If it's so, like if you're upset, they're taught to nuzzle. Oh, yeah. I didn't even have to tell them to nuzzle. Where a lot of times I'll catch myself going like this. It's <laughs> yeah, good boy. And it, it gets them out of their funk. And, you know, because he wants to be petted. So he's like, okay, yeah. play with me. Play yeah. with me, yeah. please. And touch. Oh, boy. Touch. Um, so my son. No. <laughs> so my hands go boy. Um, my son used to put his hands in his pants. Um, and in opportune time, you know, inappropriate times. And all I have to do is say touch. And it knocks him out of the cycle where if he's like babbling about something, I can tell him touch. And he'll just touch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it'll knock him out of that, that cyclical yes. mindset of where he's he's doing singing the same thing over and over and over. And it breaks the cycle. So this is a picture of obviously a child who has had a meltdown in a grocery store parking lot mm -hmm. and there's a service dog providing that deep pressure. Um, so by providing anxiety uh, relief, the anxiety is reduced. The, the need to wander or bolt or get away from the caregiver is also reduced. So um, that means less chances for a child like Thatcher or a child like your child um, or a child like Albert to get to just disappear. Um, her son and my son go to school together. 
So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I knew her son's name so quick. Um, sensory processing disorder, of course. You know, most of our kids with autism have, they have sensory processing disorder, which is not officially a diagnosis. It is just something that goes along with having autism. Um, but because of that, they get overwhelmed, they hear sounds louder than we hear them, they smell, you know, the, the smell is stronger to them, um, lights are brighter, that sort of thing. Um, and that can be really, really overwhelming. And I actually wanted to find this vi this great video online of um, it. It was somebody who wanted Carly Fleischman is her name. She wanted people to know what it was like to have sensory overload. And she had done this video. She has autism, is completely nonverbal, and communicates via typing on a laptop. Um, and she made this cool video, and you should go and find it, um, and it kind of shows a neurotypical person what it's like to have autism and go through this sensory overload. Um, I mean, like, if you're, at a, if you're at a concert, it's too loud, if you want to cover your ears, imagine having that issue in a grocery store. So, kind of the same difference there, and I don't know if I'm going to get this one to play, Probably not. Um, Did you check to see if you hooked into St. Michael's internet? Because sometimes it falls off. That might be why you can't get it to uh, Maybe that is it. I mean, I'm connected to the guest thing. Yeah. So. Sometimes it drops. But know. that's okay. That's okay. There are some other videos that I'm going to show that I know will play because they came from the computer instead of the internet. <laughs> um. So another step in the process was finding the right company. I decided to go through a company because, well, I am not equipped to train a dog. I had dogs as pets growing up. I never potty trained them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was not my job. That was, you know, parents' job. And, and quite frankly, some of that didn't, also didn't get done. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> um, so I decided that uh, I... I decided that I didn't want to try to train my own service dog, and I feel like I made the best decision for Thatcher. Um, and then I was introduced to Four Paws for Ability at the Bluegrass Autism Walk uh, one year, and I started asking questions. And just a little sidebar, Bluegrass Autism Walk this year is on September 10th, from, uh, is it 2 to 5, at Whitaker Bank Ballpark. That's where the legends so are. The legends. Cool. Yes, um, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, there are a lot of people working to make sure that it is going to be awesome. And normally, and I'm pretty sure that they have already said that they're going to. Uh, the people from the UK program are there, so uh, they have the they have some of the four paws dogs that are in training. Um, so I knew of a local company, it was less time to drive, but Four Paws stood out. And the reason Four Paws stood out is because even though they were closer um, with this other company, you had to pay the money up front instead of fundraising. And then you kind of you kind of went through this process of training your own service dog. And they would kind of guide you, but I didn't feel like that was the right fit, and they didn't have as high a success rate. So um, the other company was Possibilities Unleashed in Frankfurt, uh, and because I have no experience training dogs, I decided that was not the best company for us. Um, but it might be the best company for somebody else. Uh, so another thing I needed to know was service dogs versus therapy dogs. What's the difference? Because there is a huge difference. Um, and one thing that I would say is please don't call my son's new service dog a therapy dog. Because it's not a therapy dog. And I feel like that's a little bit of offensive to the service dog who's gone through all of this extra training. And I realize maybe they don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> 
but I feel like they have feelings too. <laughs> um, so, service dog. And I want you to notice this. I know it's really hard to see, but do not pet. Mm. <laughs> so, do you know, never... the difference between a therapy dog and a service dog? Yeah. So I'm getting to that. Okay. Um, so the service dog says do not pet. And the reason it does is because the service dog is working. Um, and unless you ask the owner, you're not supposed to pet a service dog. And when you do, that person might say, no, he's working. You should never be offended by that. They're just trying to make sure that their dog stays on task. Because um, their dog might be doing something very, very important, like um, being able to alert whether or not a child is going to have a seizure. Mm. Um, now, our service dog is not going to be trained for that because Thatcher has too many per day and they're really hard to pinpoint. So a dog can't be trained for that, for him. Um, and here's a therapy dog. And this therapy dog is at a hospital. Um, they're okay to pet. They're, it's welcome that people pet them. You might find them at hospitals, nursing homes, schools, universities. They're there to help people with anxiety. They're not working for one person. They're working usually for a group of people. Um, and so this is where I was getting to the difference, the law. Under the Americans with Disabilities Act, a service dog or service animal is defined as a dog that has been indif individually trained to work or perform tasks for an individual with a disability and tasks performed by the dog must be directly related to the person's disability. And that is a quote from a story that just came out from the Four Paws founder and CEO, Karen Shirk. Um, and she's fabulous. She makes sure she knows every single family before they arrive to do their training. Which I think that is fabulous because she's the founder, she's the CEO, and she's still the face. Um, unless you count this fella, <laughs> the, the dog she's holding is Piper Papillon, and unfortunately Piper passed away. That's her, that was her service dog. Um, she's got a new one, Boom, right? Um, she's got a new service dog, Boom, but she loved Piper. And I'm not sure what Piper helped her with. <laughs> I have never figured that out yet. But um, the Papillons are great, too. They're, they're really good for things like um, PTSD, uh, seizure alert, diabetic alert, that, that sort of thing. Okay, so a little bit, little bit more about that. Service dogs have a right to go wherever their handler goes unless it poses a danger to the dog or, or to other people or animals. So, for example, a service dog can go into a restaurant, but cannot go into the large cat exhibit at the zoo. Because that would be a bad idea. <laughs> um, that would be a bad idea for the dog, for the large cat, for pretty much everybody, right? Um, a therapy dogs usually do not have the right to go into a restaurant or grocery stores. They can't have her go onto planes with their owners, go out into public places like schools, nursing homes, hospitals, when they are permitted. So basically what that means is if you have a therapy dog, somebody who has a place of business, whether that be a school, a nursing home, a hospital, can say, no, we don't want this therapy dog here. So, but with a service dog, they cannot deny access. Some people try, and they're wrong. But they're not supposed to because it's against the law. The only places it's, that can deny access are churches and government buildings. Right. Believe it or not. Weird. <laughs> you wouldn't think that either of those two places would ever do, but those are the two places that are allowed to. They are allowed to yeah. deny access. Yeah, I know the government believes. Not that they will, not, so, okay. We've never had a problem with it, but I've heard yeah. of people who have had problems with, who have wow. been turned away from churches. Wow. They won't. Mm -hmm. They won't admit a ser their service dog to a church. Not this church. No, no. I was going to say <laughs> none of the churches I've ever encountered have ever denied us. I mean, the the person in charge actually looks at us like we're crazy when we ask 
permission. They're like, oh. yeah. Why, why are you asking? Like, yeah. Because you're allowed to deny it. They're like, well, why would they do that? Right. So. Um, and the other confusion is when it comes to emotional support animals, because those are also different. Um, emotional support animals are not service dogs. They're not therapy dogs. Um, they are only there to provide emotional support, and their rights only extend to where the owner lives and to air travel. So that means your emotional support animals should not be riding the bus with you. <laughs> um, so I have this cute little American Airlines <laughs> picture. Somebody with a dog. Um, I'm going to go back a slide. Uh, and also with emotional support animals, they're not allowed to go into places like restaurants, grocery stores, hospitals. They're only allowed to go in that person's place of residence, so they're protected by the Fair Housing Act, and airplanes. That's it. <laughs> okay, so the foster program at the University of Kentucky, <laughs> which I think is Fantastic. I love their program. Um, they have students who are fostering the dogs and getting them socialized. Um, the dogs have usually come from prison, <laughs> where they've gotten their obedience training. Their, um, the training for uh, potty training, that sort of thing. <laughs> you know? um, and then once they're once they're done with the puppy house in prison, and then they go off to college. <laughs> and, and a lot of times, and I think this is really cool, if a student has one of the dogs in training, the dog will walk with them at graduation. Oh, yeah. Cool. Which is so awesome. That is cool. yeah. and, and then a lot of times the students end up going to Xenia to watch their fosters graduate their service dog, dog training. So. Mm -hmm. I know Heidi did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of dogs just graduated that came from UK. So, mm -hmm. so you probably noticed that there seemed to be an abundance of service dogs in Lexington. <laughs> um, but what what you might not have known previously it, is that a lot of these dogs aren't training. So, like this one, um, which is why he's a little rambunctious. Um, you said he was nine months old? Uh, ten months, yeah. Ten months old? Yeah, so only ten months old. They start the training very, very young. Um, they start putting vests on them when they're still in the puppy house. So, it's got to get them used to wearing that thing. Yeah, I've had her since she was five months old. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm not gonna get this one either. Oh, that's so disappointing. That's okay because I am gonna put this online, <laughs> so you can oh, watch it for yourself. Um, but this video is public service announcement done by the University of Kentucky, and they came and and did an interview with me. So uh, I'm I'm in this, and Thatcher. I think is in this too. <laughs> so the next step was fundraising. Oh my gosh, fundraising. <laughs> um, how much does it cost? Oh yeah, that's not a joke. It can cost around $22,000 or more. And I think that number is what, 24,000 on our website now? I think um, that's an old number. Oh. Yeah. Um, and there's a reason for that. A lot goes into that training. So, um, the purpose is, you know, they have to pay for the cost of food for the first one to two years, toys, treats, vet care, um, getting the dogs spayed or neutered, uh, you know, pay, you know, paying their employees, their trainers, uh, a living wage so that they can be able to continue to help others. And this organization is a nonprofit 501c3 but they would not work if they didn't have employees. Um, it just wouldn't, it, it wouldn't work near like ASBG, <laughs> who does not, we don't have any paid employees. <laughs> it's all it's all, yeah, it's all volunteer. Um, so, for possibility requires that their participants receiving a service dog send their families meet a fundraising requirement as part of the agreement. Um, we're told about that up front. We're told about that before we ever fill out an application. 
Um, our fundraising requirement was $14,000. Now we're asking a little more because, you know, increased costs. Um, and we started in October of 2014. So it, it wasn't easy. <laughs> we finished fundraising back in April, and we had a grand total of $15,342.26. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was not easy. And we had a big anonymous donor that donated that's awesome. $9,000. Oh, wow. That's really cool. awesome. Um, and like I said, nonprofit. Uh, all the funds went directly to Four Paws for Ability. And that went to help Thatcher. That went to help other kids get their service dogs. And it, that's just the way it works. And you notice they're not asking us to do the full amount. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, they're asking for what is absolutely necessary. And that's it. And the really cool thing about the fundraising, that's money. Mm -hmm. um, the really cool thing about the fundraising was there, there was, it is, a huge family network on Facebook. And they connect you with that family network. These are people who've already done their fundraising. Oh, and I have a question for you. This is, this is your time right now. Okay. Um, you have a second service stock. Did you have to fundraise? Yes. How much did you have to fundraise? Seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand. So which you have to do half. Half. Yeah. Right. And we're told about that when we get a service dog, you fundraise for half the cost the next time you need a service dog. So and every time thereafter. What? <laughs> and every time thereafter. So right. it doesn't get knocked in half again or anything on your third. Right. <laughs> um so it's fifty percent of the first dog. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you don't have to do the whole thing. What they're over. asking at the, the time. first time. Yes. Um, right. Yes. Service dog. Yeah. Well, did your first dog retire because it wasn't the perfect fit? No. Or she age. retired because of age. Okay. Um, she is 10 years old. Well, now 12 years old. Okay. Um, at the time she was, that we got him, she was 10. And she had already had two name replacements. Uh, cancer twice. Oh wow! And something else. Yeah, so, it was so she's time. been through a lot, and yeah. she just she's a big dog. Yeah, baby. she's a great Pyrenees boxer mix. She oh. still alerts to my son when he has a meltdown or anything, mm -hmm. but she knows he will take care of yeah the the, the heavy lifting. Yeah. Um, she still goes up to him. She'll still nuzzle him. She'll still love on him. She just can't do the, the heavy lifting work anymore because she was just getting tired. You know, so you've got both dogs too. We still have both dogs, yes. That's yeah, right. yeah, they That's like nice. for you never you never have to return to the dog unless unless something you've happens. abused the dog right. and then they come and they take that dog. They mm -hmm. I was gonna say because you never they have care. to return the dog. Yeah. They can come and take the dog at any time. Right. Because they really care about their dogs and they don't want them to be in a bad place. Of course, most of the families also don't want them to be in a bad place, but unfortunately we did hear of one story where um, Ms. Shirk had to go and rescue one of the dogs. Um, so from there, I, from the uh, family group, I was able to find information about numerous fundraisers, um, and I got advice for getting into our local news, and so this video you is my like parents be help giving their child one more Christmas gift this year. Donnie and Joe Grayson's son has autism, and they worry that they'll soon have trouble keeping up with them. The KYT Sean Lee talked to the family about a gift that may be able to help. There's a lot of love inside the Grayson home, but also a lot of challenges. I get to be home whenever he needs me, which is a lot. Joe and Donnie Grayson's son, Thatcher, has autism. Well, we've known since he was uh, about three. Um, that's when we got the official diagnosis. But I'll be honest with you, um, I knew that they were going to diagnose him with autism when he was about two. He's eight now and growing fast. We have to worry about him getting up in the middle of the night and, and, and doing things in our apartment or, God forbid, going out the doors and going somewhere. I haven't been able to move as quickly. I can't chase him down. I can't go anywhere by myself with him um, just because of his wandering behavior. Because if he were to bolt, I wouldn't be able to catch him. They think they found a 
solution. It will be a lot quicker in ways that we don't know. Four Paws for Ability trains autism assistance dogs. If you had a dog here, the dog could alert us to the fact that, hey, he's awake. They could alert us to the fact that, um, he's at the doors. But they're not cheap. The Graysons say it will cost about $14,000 for the dog and the time spent for training. We've actually been fundraising for a year already. We're at $585, so we've got $13,000 for, you know, you do the math. It's a long way to go, but it's a goal they hope they hit someday soon. When you give a poor ball for realty donation, they have to get a dog for a child who needs it. It's the best present that child, that family, will ever get. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. The Graysons have set up a fundraising site for Thatcher's dog. We have a link to that page on our website, WKYT.com. So, yeah, um, so the reason why that was all shaky is because we recorded that on our DVR and then Donna used his phone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the video was online for some time and now it's gone. So I don't know what happened to it. I guess they archived it or something. Um, but, yeah, we were on the news um, and we got advice about how to go about doing that. Is that when you got the anonymous? Um, it was shortly thereafter. Wow. That's incredible. Um, so there were some organizations that helped us with fundraising. Um, we, of course, the first giving donation website was the very first thing we set up. Um, Four Paws for Ability only allows two of these types of donation websites because they work better with nonprofits. Um, so they don't allow things like GoFundMe or anything like that. So, I mean, that's good to know. But they tell you which ones they recommend and. You know, they, they're very open about what, what you have to do and why. Um, there's the first giving logo. Um, so we did a fundraiser with Puccini's. Um, we actually did one for Autism Society, and I did one for Thatcher. <laughs> and I organized both of those. <laughs> um, in the future, I might organize another one for ASPT. So. Uh, then I also did a t-shirt booster. And the shirt that we first had was designed by Heidi Vol Volrath. She's a UK graduate, and she also fostered a couple of these service dogs, two of which helped Thatcher at speech therapy be more accustomed to there being dogs around, because he's a little sketchy of dogs, especially when they bark. <laughs> hmm. um, then we did a Yankee Candle fundraiser, and I was actually doing a lot of these at the same time. So, um, Danbury Nail Wraps, uh, and of course I have the names of my connections as well uh, that I found. And I found most of these through that family network. Mm. Um, 31 Handbags, which uh, this, is, this is the one that I bought. Because oh. um, of course, you know, if you're doing a fundraiser, you're like, oh, I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Discovery Toys, which I love Discovery Toys. They are great for kids who have issues with fine motor, things like that. Um, they're, they're great for kids who have um, disabilities. So that's a good one to look into. And they're a good company, too. We did a Tupperware fundraiser. Everybody knows about Tupperware. Yeah. We did fun pasta fundraising online. We actually didn't get very much from that because, well, it's artisan pasta, and I don't think anybody wanted artisan pasta. <laughs> um, but some people, for some people, that works. That's why it still exists. So. And then we did a Bravelets fundraiser, uh, which was great. I, Bravelets are awesome. Um, so they all say be brave on them, and they're, it's jewelry, oh. necklaces, bracelets, that sort of thing. Cool. What do you got me? Do they, we just got one at the hospital gift shop. Could that be, it's a little it, band, and yes. it says be brave? Uh-huh. That's a bracelet, definitely. And okay. the proceeds probably went to a nonprofit organization. Yeah, I think it said that. Okay. So we also did a funds to org shoe drive. That didn't work out very well. Um, it's up at the top. <laughs> and the reason why it didn't work out very well is because not enough people wanted to donate. 
their shoes. <laughs> um, I, could, I just couldn't find enough people to donate their shoes. If I had advertised that in a better way, that might have worked better. Um, a lot of people go on the news to do that one. Um, so we did get some out of it, but not, not much. And then candy bars, which I sold by myself. Uh, and I use Square Card Reader, and I have them today. They're a dollar. Um, so, yeah, I brought them. Because we are still fundraising for travel expenses. Um, and travel expenses for the dog? Or? For us to be able to go to the, to the two-week training. Cool. And I'll get into that, too. Yeah. So, getting a class date. Um, once we completed the fundraising requirement, we were given a potential date of December 2017. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like, okay, uh, you know, April 2016, December 2017. Well, that seems like a long wait, but, you know, the dog had to be born and <laughs> go through some training. And we haven't met the dog yet. We, we won't know who, who our dog is until match day, which will be a couple of days before we go to our training. Might be a week, might be less. Um, and as we got to our class date, we were moved up, which was cool. Um, and we got a specific date, so we're going November 6th to the 17th. We have to fundraise for a hotel, food, um, initial dog expenses, uh, that sort of thing. And the cool thing about the class, I think, is how my brother described it. Um, he, he, when I explained to him what we had to do, why we had to go for two weeks, he said, oh, how to drive your dog. Okay, because the handlers also have to learn, um, because the dogs are already trained when we get there. It, it's really people training, right? It's really people training. <laughs> so how to drive your dog. Um, and that's why we do a two-week training. So what will it be like? Um, we'll learn specific commands to help Thatcher um, in the areas where the dog will be trained. Again, that's tethering, tracking, behavior, interruptions. Um, what was class like for you? It was all in in class stuff for us. It's going to be different for you. Right, because we have to be half day half day outside in all kinds of fun weather. Be prepared. Right. <laughs> um, for us, it was, we got there at like 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning or something, and we went from 10 till noon or 1 of meet and greet first, and then it was basic obedience, and basic obedience, and basic obedience, and more basic obedience. And then as the days progress, it's doing different, the different things, the over, the uh, touch, the nuzzle, because like she said, the dogs all know it. The dogs know it really well. The people don't know it at all. And the dogs don't know their child. Yeah, that's enough. And that's what a child. good portion of the, the classes are. It's, it's basically a 9 to 5, kind of, or 10 to 5 class day. And it's it's going to be most 9 of it, to 5 for us because we have tracking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tracking starts earlier. I couldn't earlier. remember if it was 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. It's yeah. long, a very long day. You're very mm -hmm. exhausted at the end of the day. But it's, it's a lot of bonding and it's a lot of just learning the, beha the behaviors that the dogs are trained to do. Um, and like I said, ours... It was nice for, for us the second time. Even the second time, it was still a, a process because he's a different dog. He listens better to my husband than he does to me, whereas the other dog listened better to me than my husband. Huh. So it's it's very so I still have a lot of issues with him. And even when you're done with class training, when you finally get to take the dog home on like Wednesday, the third or fourth day, I can't remember what day it was, you finally get to take him home for the first night and then it's still training at, at the hotel. So you're doing laps around the outside of the hotel or laps in the hallway or, you know, different commands in your room where you're, you're sending your child into another room and you're telling them to go find them. 
And mm -hmm. it's a real short track, right. but it's still practice. And it's getting to know what the dog is doing and the dog getting to know your child right. and you getting to know your dog. And so it's, it's just yeah. a whole lot it's a of process. everything. So what's the difference between like Thatcher giving um, commands to the dog and you and your husband giving commands to the dog? Okay, so the way it works with four paws is because the service dogs almost exclusively go to children, um, there has to be the child, the dog, and an adult handler. So, um, and that's because, well, Thatcher doesn't really talk that much, mm -hmm. although he did say about my friend the other day, uh, you don't come to my house. <laughs> because, that's right. Because he was upset because he had to use the bathroom he's not used to. Don't <laughs> <laughs> in my house. Yeah, yeah, he's, and he didn't That's say it to her. No, right, and he didn't say it to her. He just was sitting on the toilet, and he said, "You don't come to my house." Yeah, it's like you don't be rude to my friend, and don't you say that in front of her. <laughs> um, but yeah, Donnie was cracking up at our, us talking to each other because you know Thatcher's sentences are usually. Re repeating something he's heard yes. and using that as, you know, communicative language. Mm -hmm. So, um, but because of that, you know, he might not really know what exactly to do his and his understanding of it wouldn't be as much as an adult's. So, um, when we go out into public, we are required to have an adult, yeah. the dog, and the child. Yeah. So, the adult has to be there. <laughs> Um, and, and they they won't allow you to do the child and the dog by themselves. The company will not allow that <laughs> um, unless there are there are some exceptions. Um, it's a, a veteran and it's a PTSD service dog, something like some that. Some of the diabetic alert dogs. Diabetic do. alert dogs because some of the they're, autism assistance dogs. Right. None of the autism assistance dogs do that. <laughs> Just because it, it's not feasible. Albert, so. yeah, would never need anyone to listen to what he, any commands he had, you know, who knows what would right. happen out in I was going to say, most of the time the dogs won't listen to the kids anyway. Right. I was going to ask, are they My trained? typical kids try to give him commands. Other kids. And he'll look at me. Oh, and then he'll, 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 he'll do it. That's awesome. But for other kids, and sometimes he'll listen, and they get really excited when he listens. <laughs> but majority of the time, he's just like, whatever. Yeah, that's really. My other, the the first one wouldn't listen to kids at all. She that's was funny. like, yeah, whatever. What about when we're talking about you know adults on the spectrum? Um, again, you know, but. This like, organization doesn't do they typically still? service adults. adults. Okay. okay. Right. Um, so there are other organizations that do that. Um, this one doesn't typically do that. They're uh -huh. usually placed with children. Okay. What about when the children age out? Can they get a second dog? That's a good question. My son just turned 17 today. I know, so yeah. So he will be an adult yeah. soon enough. Um, he will still never be allowed to. Their rationale, I believe, um, for not allowing the children to handle the dogs is because what happens if they have a meltdown? What happens if they get overstimulated? The whole reason you have the dog is for the problems that come with autism. So what happens if that child or adult has one of those problems? Are they going to let the dog go? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And it's still a dog. Mm -hmm. So. He, yeah. he is very, he's a very well trained dog, but he's still a dog. He will still run after a squirrel. He mm -hmm. will still run after a duck. You know, so I know that, and I'm alert to that. My son, he'd be just walking along and, mm -hmm. you know, get yanked out the other. So it's, it's all about the control issue and the safety of both the, the person, the child, and the dog. I think my question was different. Now, your child is 17, mm -hmm. and this dog lives until he's 27. Yeah. Can you go back to Four Paws Place again? But probably, probably not. Because yeah. Probably, just because 
we've been there through the whole thing. It's already established. And yeah, it's, it's already established. established. And it's, so you want to establish again, while the child is young. Okay. Right. Okay. And the only way they'll do it, though, still, is even if my son is 27 and we get another dog, I will still be the primary handler. Yeah. Or another adult will be the primary handler. He will never be the primary handler. And we are allowed to train other people to be the primary handler when we come back, uh, but there still has to be a primary. So let's say the service dog goes to school with the child and we request that an aide be the handler, we would train them once we come back. Um, and, and of course, that would take quite a bit longer because we're not certified trainers. <laughs> so it would just take a little bit longer for us to train another person to do what needs to be done. Is it necessary that the dogs go to school and places? Like, do they have to That be... depends on the family. Okay. My Not the... never gone to school. Okay. But there are other families who have service dogs that do go to school. My plan is for that your service dog to go to school. Um, but... I understand that that plan might not work out. Yeah, because so, it depends on the school. Right, it depends on, it depends on the school. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. The schools have the loophole of whether or not they'll allow the aid to provide the service. Um, because she'd have to be trained. Or, right. Yeah. Well, they still don't have to. They don't have to allow the, the right. aid to do it. Right. Right. So, even if the aid is willing. They have lots of loopholes, don't they? They, they do. For everything. They do. They do. But some schools are very, very cooperative. But some schools aren't. Um, sometimes it works for the family. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it, it's all just pretty much like in the draw. And as she was saying, these service dogs are still dogs. Mm -hmm. And we got this nice little um, thing in our packet when we uh, when we got our our initial packet after we filled out our application. And at the top, it says, service dogs are not robots. Yeah. And so it's our responsibilities. And we had to read through all of this. I read through every page of document that they sent to me. And then when we got our class dates, they sent the document again. <laughs> so sure. I got to read it again. <laughs> um, but if you want to look oh, yeah. at what it says, then you're welcome to do so. It says, if the basic gist is, you know, service dogs are still dogs, they're still going to behave like dogs. They, you know, when their vests come off, they'll probably lick you, and they'll play with you, and when they're not working, they're going to act like dogs. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, of course, this one's a puppy, and, you know, he's the last one. They were interested in each other, yeah. 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 He was interested. Oh, yeah, they were very much interested in each other. Um, so we'll spend two weeks in a hotel. Um, near four paws to, to learn the commands, help Thatcher bond with the dog. Um, I checked in how much the cost of the hotel is. For two weeks, it's $2,000. Around Which $2, hotel is it? Um, which hotel? Yeah, where is Um, I think I have that information. <clears throat> because they gave us some information about where, uh, where we can stay when we got our when we got our class dates, when it was time to send in our video. Um, and I'll tell you about the video. Uh, so, Homewood Suites by Hilton, Dayton, Fairborn. But that's what I, what I asked. Right. Because you could also get donations of honors from people who are part of the honors programs of those particular hotels. That's and interesting. Those points can be used to reduce your, uh, the cost of your room. You tell me more about that. I'm very interested in what you just said. It's all online. Okay. Um, so there's that. And we actually have a contact person. Um, this one was recommended first because they're so good with the families. Um, there are some hotels, in fact, one in the area that the company just, they don't recommend at all for their families anymore because they requested that a family with their service dog in training leave. <laughs> it, it was bad. I know it was bad. I'm not sure how bad, <laughs> um, but I know it was bad for them to say, just don't even bother with this hotel. Yeah. Um, we do have to stay within 15 miles of Four Paws so that we can be there early for training every day. Um, you know, they have places where we can give the dog a bath and, you know, and of course, that'll be done on our own time, right? 
raise the dog on your own time. Um, and then there was residence in. They did put the Ronald McDonald House on this list, but they only accept two families per class. So um, here I am thinking, you know, there are probably people worse off than we are at this stage, and I'm not sure if I want to go with the Ronald McDonald House only because I feel like there might be some couple of other families who need it more. Um, so uh, they also said a camping ground. I asked my husband about that because his dad's got a camper and he was like, I don't think that's a good idea <laughs> because the camper smells funny. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, and then there's Airbnb and other rental house options. They put one on here. I don't know of the other ones. I'd have to ask the family network. Um, but, and I have, a, I have a couple of relatives who live in the Dayton area. I do too. The only problem is they're elderly, and they're elderly enough that it would be an imposition for me to stay with them. So and Thatcher, uh, I'm thinking of my grandson. How that would yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're they're elderly and one of them just turned ninety. So oh. that's that's how elderly it would be in a position. Yeah. Um, even though they, they would totally be willing. Yeah. But it would still be in a position. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that doesn't include food, transportation, things for the dog. Um, there's the four plus store where we might have to purchase a few things. Um, I looked into the price. Uh, so I looked into the price for like everything for like the kennel that we have to purchase. It's an at home kennel. He and sleeps in that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, it, it's it's really for the dog's safety. Yeah. The dog will use it when he needs it. Okay. Um, he or she needs it. Um, but we have to have one. So, and we have to have the recommended one because they don't want the dogs to be injured on a crappy kennel, mm -hmm. which has happened, or they wouldn't make that rule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so now we're fundraising for travel for travel expenses. I set up a UCAN page, um, and the reason I did that is because First Giving works with nonprofits. This one can work with nonprofits or with individuals. So. Um, and we're allowed to use whatever organization we want for the travel, for the travel expenses. Um, I also designed a t-shirt with boosters, so we got two t-shirts. And this was the design, I know it's hard to see, it's a little boy, and it says, oh, I have autism, and a dog, the dog says, and I'm a service dog, and at the bottom it says, what's your superpower? <laughs> and those are thought bubbles, because, well, a lot of our kids, they are non to minimally verbal, um, and service dogs, well, dogs don't talk. So, um, that, that was why I designed it that way, and I did, I hand drew that. That is really good. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like that. I am not an artist, but I drew that. It's adorable. Yeah, it's supposed to look kind of like that. <laughs> um, and of course, candy bars, I'm still selling for travel expenses. Um, I can't wait to be done selling candy. <laughs> because I can't eat them because I'm lactose intolerant and most of them chocolate. <laughs> um, so far we've raised about five hundred of our five thousand dollar goal, and you might wonder, why did we say five thousand dollars is our goal? And we know that we might not reach that and that's yeah. okay. Um, so, you know, the cost of the hotel, cost of food for us, and because Thatcher has celiac and because I have celiac, we have to be very careful what we choose. Unfortunately, our food is more expensive, which I hate, but there it is. <laughs> um, our grocery bill kind of skyrocketed, too, when we were both diagnosed. Um, so new budgets. Um, the initial vet visit when we get home, the at-home kennel, dog food, extra vests, gentle leader, which you have a gentle leader right here. Um, a lot of people ask if these are muzzles. They're not. Mm -hmm. they're, they're more like um, the... I call them like collars for your face. It's like a halter on a horse. Yeah, yeah like like it's a bridle like and helps guide them. So, uh, but a lot of people are asked that question: Is why is your dog wearing a muzzle? And yeah, it's not wearing a muzzle, but okay. And and they can still open their mouth, bark, whatever. It's yeah. just a guide. They're not supposed to bark, but they can't. <laughs> um, and 
Why am I not doing more fundraisers for travel? Well, because many of these other agencies that we worked with previously will only fundraise for nonprofits. You have to have a tax ID and be a 501c3 organization for a lot of those other ones. Tupperware, Yankee Candles, um, Discovery Toys. I looked into them. They only do it for nonprofits. Um, and since the money is not going directly to a nonprofit, um, instead goes directly to Thatcher and his family for the travel expenses, that's why we're not getting those other organizations to help with that. Um, some families even do bake sales for travel expenses. Um, and here's some proof that service dogs are wonderful. Mm. Um, so this is Thatcher with um, this, uh, let's see, okay, <laughs> my little mouse isn't showing up, so. Um, this was his speech therapist, Meg, um, that was one of her students. That's Heidi Volrath, um, and this is Selvig. Um, Selvig was a service dog in training that was working with Thatcher to help him socialize with dogs and be more comfortable with them. And so the video went ahead and Oh yeah, and, and at this point he was only, I don't know, maybe a year? He was about a year old? Yeah. What kind of dog is that? It, he is a golden doodle. Yeah, golden doodle. Um, wow. Selfick went on. Dog. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Selfick went on to become a service dog for another person who had autism. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Where is Thatcher's she? down there. He's petting. Because say, where is he? I know. Yeah, he is down there. He's a while ago. He's so little. I mean, he, not now. This but. was from a few, like two or three years ago. So yeah, um, Thatcher is five two. I was gonna say, he's oh my, my height. He's my yeah, he, he's, he's huge. Oh. And he's nine. And he'll be <laughs> ten at the end of August. I know, it's incredible. <laughs> they are the same age. So, yeah, um, this video was taken right after he had a meltdown. And the dog is comforting him. And this this is a dog in training. So, I mean. That's what it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. The UK program has been really great so about. with them. Yeah. Yeah. The UK program has been really great about when I request that the service dogs come, they come, they show up. That's the that's student who shows up with one. That's nice. um, and I, I asked them to come. I asked if, if a student could come with one of the service dogs in training, and somebody showed up, mm -hmm. which I think is awesome. Yes. So they really want the dogs to socialize and you know be a, be part of the community. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a video of Thatcher working with Samoset, but she also um, fostered another service dog, Samoset, um, who was in training the time when Thatcher worked with him. And this is beneficial for the dogs as well. They get exposure to the kind of people they're going to be around all the time. Um, and Samoset was even smaller, six months when Thatcher started working with him. <laughs> and he he was a golden, just pure golden retriever, and lots and lots of hair. Wow. Um, and Samoset also went on, um, and he just recently finished his service dog training. Um, who did he get placed with? Do you remember? I don't remember. I think I don't remember if the kid's name was Chris or I'm not sure. I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> They have all the matches on Facebook, I'm sure you know, and like little stories yeah. with them. Yeah, they have oh. the matches on Facebook, the stories. I read it, I just don't remember. Yeah, my head. oh, I love reading all the stories. Um, <laughs> so after Thatcher had done some, you know, socialization with Selvig and then Sam set, eventually he did this. This is a, uh, a dog at my parents' house that he had previously been afraid of. This is not a service dog. No, I don't think the dog's name is Belle. Thatcher, be careful with her nose. She does not like that. So he did this on his She own. likes that. Yeah. Albert used to pierce oh, Libby's eyes. Yeah, they do. Oh, my God. It's not anymore. <laughs> but he did this on his own, and he never would have done that. Be nice to you, Belle, okay? Yeah. 
be and nice he's been to afraid the dog. Of her before Do you want to go away? You know, kind of uh, no, no she'll be there with I, you. And the dogs will bark. So. Oh. Okay. He didn't want me to do it. And this is the service dog that service dog in training that Thatcher's working with now. This is not a video, it's just a picture. Um, this is Weedle. Um, and Weedle's person is Adam. Um, and Adam has been fantastic. Um, and whenever Weedle can't be there, Adam makes sure there's another dog to come, which is really great too. So Thatcher's also worked with Emoji and Pixel. Yeah, um, and you'll notice all these dogs have kind of weird names yeah. because they theme the litters, and you can change the dog's name when once they come home with you or not, and a lot of families choose that based on whether or not their child can say that name yeah. or will ever be able to say that name. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but Weedle is from the Pokemon litter, which I think is really awesome. Um, Emoji is from, I don't know what litter. They're from the internet litter, so like yeah. emoji, pixel. There's okay, so they're from the internet litter. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> um, now I know. Or apps litter, sorry. But. Um, Selvig, which litter was he from? Norskull. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and his Selvig has a sibling named Thor, so I should have known that. I just didn't remember. I just know Selvig is a Norse god. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I, I do want you to meet the dogs. So you see, there's a couple of dogs here. I definitely want you to meet with them, socialize with them, uh, get to know their handlers. Um, if you'd like to have candy bars, I have candy bars. <laughs> They're a dollar each. Um, except for the York peppermint patties, they're kind of small, they're two for a dollar. Um, and thank you for taking the time to learn about, more about service dogs and how they help with, aut with autism spectrum disorder. Um, Thatcher is considered level three in the DSM-5, requires substantial support. Um, and if you want more information on service dogs and the four paws service dogs specifically, can go to fourpawsforability.org. And do you have any more questions? Because I'm open to questions. Good right. job, Mommy. Good job, Andre. It's getting out of here. It is not a lot of work, but it is 100% worth it. I have never met a family, and I've met a few in Lexington, that has said it has not been worth all the work and effort they put into it. Did the time seem like it went by fast, or you know, these two years? Almost I don't know. Every once time it was done, yeah. <laughs> once it was done with the with the initial fundraising, yeah. yeah, it seemed like it was not that long. Mm -hmm. But then I heard about somebody who raised their funds and somebody in Harrisburg raised their funds in two months. Uh -huh. And I was like, how did they do that? <laughs> I want to know. Yeah, um, yeah. But I talked to my mom about that, and she said, well. They probably had a very large donor like you did. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. no problem. Nice and quick. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. And actually, for the first year, I was not like really pushing it. Um, I wasn't wasn't really putting as much effort yeah. as I really needed to into it. Yeah. Um, and once I said, you know what? I don't care what our landlords think of this. I don't care what our neighbors think. We're getting him a service dog because I can't take this anymore. <laughs> And that's kind of um, what it sounds like, you know. Right. You and I, yep. I slipped, I fell, I broke my ankle uh -huh. like three years ago. I broke it in three places. Oh. That's why in the news video I'm saying I have a lot of trouble running after Thatcher and catching him. Oh. I, I also have asthma. I've had asthma since I was a kid. So <laughs> chasing him down is a task. Um, and sometimes I just cannot catch him. I barely no. can do it now. Yeah. I can barely so, catch him. And, but I, yeah, I broke my ankle in three places. It's constantly hurts. So, um, usually when I go out, if I'm taking Thatcher to the park, which unfortunately Lexington does not have any parks that have fences uh, all the way around. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you probably know this from experience. I'm working with the um, Lexington Parks and Rec to get that done. Um, I, I need to call them again and 
bothered them about it. Yeah. yeah. I've bothered them twice about it already. That's awesome. Um, but I really want it done because our kids need that. Um, they need at least one park where they can feel safe. Run around. At, where they can run around. Albert at the um, Jacobson Park. Oh, oh my yeah, God. We don't, we don't go, there. go there. He oh goes to the water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I the mean. Parks and walks are right in the middle of doing their what does the community need from us. I went to one of the meetings on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. There are not a few coming up, and they've got these big sign up sheets where you can explain what those needs are. Wow. And you can get other people who are like you. And then, yeah. Let me know more about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. On, it's in your um, emails. Okay. Is it the listserv email? Yeah, send it to me again. I'll, I'll look again. for it. Um, but yeah, I've been bothering Parks and Rec about that. Uh, they are looking at three parks to do that. That'd be great. Um, just an area, kind of like a dog park. The dog park you know? in Jacobson is all fancy. Yeah, Albert a dog likes park to is rain. What you ask him for yeah, a dog park. I mean, Albert That's loves to run. It's, it's one park, of his so favorite weird. things. But well, two of the parks, two of the parks they were already looking at. Um, I think one's Castlewood, so I think that's... Well, they're looking at buying land for new parks, and if they oh, have information about new parks and what those new park needs are, uh -huh. you're more likely to get a fixed park yes. when they build it than yeah. if they fence pieces on existing parks. Right. right. And then yeah. I also suggested Mount Tabor to them, because Mount Tabor Park is kind of small. The play area would be extremely easy to fence. Um, uh, it, you know where Mount Tabor Road is? Yeah. It's like back in there between Alumni and Richmond Road. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, it's a very small park. I love soccer sports. or some practice that maybe. Right. Yeah. I love taking Thatcher there because there's hardly anybody there. That's good. And the Masterson Station was all the way. The dog park there was totally enclosed. Yes, Masterson Station. Dog right, the dog parks, parks are. The yeah. kid parks aren't. <laughs> you know, the playgrounds where the kids want to play. Um, and, and some of them are partially fenced, but like our Houdini little kids, oh, they, they can get out. They want, they <laughs> I just spent um, several thousand trying to Albert proof our house from getting out. And he got out on Thursday, and I had a panic attack for the first time in years because I used to have them whenever he got out of the house. But, you know, I this one was more about the fact that I was picturing myself my mother's age and him still, like, like they don't even make products that can keep him home, you know? Like, have you heard of the Big Red Safety Box? Yeah. Yeah. You have? Yeah. It's not Albert proof. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it's it's got alarms, so it kind of yeah. Well, but it's not really for proofing. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's not. He got out of the backyard. He, he climbed to the top of the play. Like I mean, basically, it just needs to be empty. He climbed on top of the swing set. And he scaled and jumped the neighbor. It's an eight like, foot. You just yeah. had an eight foot fence put up. Yeah, yeah. He wow. scaled and jumped. I tell you it. how many fences, how many times, how much running. And we live between Manowar and Tate Street, which are, the, you know, that is such a big. And he would go off riding. He learned to buy, ride a bicycle really early. And then when we finally found him after everybody's driving around, he got home before. It was, I wasn't lost, you were lost. Uh, yeah, it's like you lost. Oh yeah, me. I didn't lose yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Was lost. They don't. They don't. Albert, yeah, yeah. He was not yeah. lost. We were lost. Right, exactly. They know where they're going. He, um, yeah, he looked at me when I was crying, and he was like touching my tears, like I'm crazy. Yeah. you know. Right. What, right. what are you doing? Why are you reacting like this about me? Just and they remember things. Thatcher, we took him. He likes to go to see the waterfall. Um, and when he says downtown, go, that one? No, you're gonna love this. When oh. he says go to waterfall, it means I want to go to Cumberland Falls. Oh, uh, yeah, loves it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we've been several times, and uh, for like several years, I couldn't go all the way down to where the beach area is because there were too many steps. I just couldn't physically do it. Well, not that long ago, I was finally able to do it again after having broken my ankle and gone through the process, the healing process and everything, I was finally able to do it again. Thatcher kept getting ahead of us because he knew where he was going because he'd been there before. Wow. And he'd only been there once. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we kept having to tell him, stop, that you have to wait for your mom and dad. You have to wait. 
Um, and we have to do that all the time. And then uh, we visited um, one of my other mothers in North Carolina, and uh, we had not been in her house in two years. We'd only ever been there one time with him. He remembered where the bathroom was because that was important. They do have a memory like yeah. that. Don't yeah, and it was it was so cool to see. Yeah, but you know they know where they're going. Yeah, even if we don't. They do. Okay. Or it's just because they don't verbalize it, it doesn't mean that they don't have the knowledge. You know? Right. Just because they don't express it like we do, doesn't and mean they don't have it. The, the big issue is the not the, understanding yeah. things. No, that's, that's, I know. Know. yeah, he what doesn't. Do you know yeah. now? What do you know I mean, how many yeah. times has Thatcher tried to walk into traffic? A lot. Right. Unfortunately. Unfortunately.